Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by... For over 30 years, Vanguard Outdoors has made the gear that turns a regular hunt into another fine day of field. We know that a good shooting stick or a nice pair of binoculars can make or break your day. Our design teams include serious hunters who work hard to bring you the best sporting optics, shooting sticks, tripods, bags, and more. We are Vanguard Outdoors. Hi everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Silik, and we have an incredible show in store for you this week. You will not want to miss it. We're gonna kick it off in the Upper Peninsula where I had the honor of tagging along and being a part of a bear hunt with a very special young lady. You will not want to miss that story. And Jimmy has a fishing adventure in store for us this week. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have a fishing adventure for you on this week's show. And with this warm weather of late, it has felt a little bit more like the middle of summer than the start of October. But we were able to hit the water with a buddy in the Houghton Lake area. We were in the area and he said he was gonna be doing some bass fishing and we jumped at the chance to get on the water on his boat. You won't want to miss that. We had a lot of fun. Lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger, and it's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes. Here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan. Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988, offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime bows, manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan. G5 offers a line of archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at g5outdoors.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at greenmarkequipment.com. This moment brought to you by DTE's Clean Vision. A couple of weeks ago here in the UP, a very special bear hunt was in the works. 15-year-old Leah Davidson partnered with the good folks from the PATH Foundation to make a dream of hers come true. Mr. Niles Spencer donated his bear tag to Leah and she was pretty excited. And they're awesome. All the people are super nice and, you know, this is the kind of people where you feel like you've known them your whole life. They're just so nice and fun and cool people. And I'm very thankful for all the work they do. Leah has been hunting for a couple of years now, and filling a bear tag has been something she's dreamed about. My, fa my family has always been a big hunting family, and so I've been out with my dad every, um, sometimes we go out and sit, and I watch him watch deer come in, and that's been pretty fun, but I didn't actually start hunting until like maybe two years ago. Okay. What do you like about hunting? Um, well, it's just, I like being out in nature. Hunting in the morning is my favorite because you get to watch the sunrise and, um, I don't know, getting big bucks and big bears and stuff is awesome. <laughs> and meat, too. I love meat. <laughs> awesome. I like that we have such a close family and we can, like, I don't know, it's really cool to, like, have a whole family that likes to hunt and just, like, being all supportive of each other and our dreams and stuff. So, that's pretty cool. Leah's dream was becoming a reality as we headed out to the hunting woods here at Stephen and Mary Beth Patricus's place just outside of Gulliver. Stephen would be guiding today, and Leah's dad, John, joined her as well. She was born with something called osteogenesis imperfecta. Most people know it has brittle, bones, brittle bone disease in it, and it affects every kid differently. Um, and uh, she has a very severe uh, form of it. So she's very brittle. She's had well over 200 fra bone fractures in her life. 
And that's without being able to walk. She can't walk. She's in a power chair. She's been in a power chair since three years old. She's been, uh, she's very, when we were, when she was first born, uh, we would break her femur or her pelvis just changing her diaper. That's how brittle she was. So she's come a long ways from those days. She's in a power, power chair. We can trans, you know, transport her just by carrying her around. She's, she's, she's 15, but she's the size of a two-year-old, you know, so she's, to, she's tiny, cute little package. Um, but man, we just have, she's a huge blessing to, to our family and to everyone who knows her. She's just literally, uh, she's never had a bad day in her life. She's just a wonderful kid and our whole family gets to benefit from, uh, from, from her. Leah was settling into the blind and checking out the Beat Adaptive shooting system that is powered by a joystick and connected to a camera that shows her a view of the scope. The trigger is pulled when both Leah and Steven press their fire buttons. Uh, that gives the opportunity for individuals like Leah um, to be able to hunt. Uh, that's, that's the biggest thing with, with Path Foundation is just getting these kids out that never had the opportunity to hunt in the woods, even though their families grew up hunting and, and they're around it, they cannot pull that trigger or shoulder that gun. These devices have made a huge difference for lots of hunters in recent years, and Leah's family is grateful for that. So she's always wanted to be able to be the one behind, you know, behind the gun, behind the trigger. We actually uh, watched an episode of Michigan Out of Doors and saw Path on there. And this was a couple years ago now, and it was just every light bulb went off. I said, Leah, I think it's possible. Let's contact this Path Foundation. And, Man, they have just been absolutely amazing. Uh, they've, they've put her on a deer hunt last year and now this bear hunt this year. And it, it, it's just, I didn't know any of that equipment even existed. But then purchasing it for myself is out of, it's so expensive. And yet they've made that, so they've made literally a family heritage possible for someone when I didn't, you know, in our family, Leah, who so desperately wanted to hunt. And I didn't know if it was ever gonna be possible. It's, it's a huge blessing. After a long sit in the exceptionally warm weather, we finally had a bear moving into the bait with just a half hour of shooting light left for the day. Right away, Leah knew she wanted to take this bear. She just needed to wait for a good opportunity to take her shot. What'd you do? I shot a bear. <laughs> that literally just like all of a sudden, <laughs> bear. You a bear? It happened. We've been waiting all night, and it was like <laughs> it showed up, and I walked across, and then it was standing up on the little bait container, and then I shot it in the head, and then it fell down. <laughs> Steven, that's a nice bear. That's a beautiful bear, man. That came in oh, a little bit later than we thought, but man, it was a beautiful Just like shot, clockwork. Just <laughs> so we're hunting in a really thick swamp. Um, right on the edge, edge of this swamp, if they run 50 yards, they're in wet, nasty stuff. So we end up taking neck shots, preferably right as looking facing us when they, when they bring their head down um, to eat. And that puts that bullet through that neck right into that body. And as you can tell, it, it dropped, it just folded that bear right down. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't, I mean, 
how <laughs> talk about talk about an amazing experience. I mean, it's one thing going deer hunting, but that was my first time ever seeing a bear in the wild like that. Her too, just like all of a sudden. Did it just like it's we there. expected, come right up on top. And... <laughs> this is awesome. Oh, okay. <laughs> got... Adrenaline? Yeah. I got to see a bear in my life. I was so tired, but I'm not anymore. <laughs> you waited that one out long. Yeah. I love you. I might have been fall asleep. You did fall asleep. I had to nudge you awake. I didn't know that. I I remember happy. I said, we got about a half an hour, you better get up. So like, just <laughs> yes. in case we see a bear, I don't have to wake you up. And sure enough, like five minutes later. Yeah, I was awake. <laughs> um, just shot a bear. <laughs> <laughs> we heard the gunshot. We all were, everybody stopped, you know, froze cold, sank, you know. Yep. We didn't end up taking the other shot because it was dead. I, I shot. We were waiting for the second shot and we never heard it. So we are like, oh, must have dropped him. Yeah. It put it, it blocked out from the right, or no, the left, and it came up over top of the eating part, whatever, eating and then it dipped its head down to eat, and I shot it right in the neck, right in the best right, shot, yeah. right in the best spot possible. Awesome. Leah couldn't wait to get out there and put her hands on her very first black bear. This girl is truly amazing and such an inspiration to anyone she comes in contact with. Leah brings an energy with her wherever she goes. And her advice to others, you should never let a disability hold you back. I don't know, it's just never hurt to try. So I think you should just try to do stuff that you want to do and it's really awesome. It's really cool to know that I can shoot one and that there's Thing, ways that people have been able to figure out for that I can go hunting with my disabilities. So that's really cool. Way to go, Leah. We, we truly believe that, um, that the Lord has, um, you know, had something in store for Leah. We didn't know exactly what that would look like. We were told she wasn't going to live past birth. And, you know, if that, was, if that was the Lord's plan in all of it, we were ready to accept that and just, you know, uh, celebrate the few moments we were going to have with her. Um, but obviously the Lord had different plans for her and she's 15 years old now. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, our, our, our faith and hope in Jesus Christ is really, uh, I mean, that's her, that's her hope too. Uh, she knows this is temporary and, uh, she's got an eternity to look forward to. That's all going to be a whole lot better and different than this. Special thanks to Leah Davidson, her parents, her four siblings, and all of the great folks at the PATH Foundation for letting us be a part of this amazing experience. We wish Leah many more amazing moments like this one, right here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, a good friend of mine reached out and said he was going to be doing some bass fishing on Houghton Lake. And it has been a little while since I've been on Houghton Lake. Jordan and I were going to be in the area, so we jumped at the chance to get out and spend some time with a good friend on Houghton Lake chasing some bass. Always a great way to spend an afternoon. We are on Houghton Lake. Uh, it's a beautiful day. Hopefully not too beautiful. Uh, we're gonna go out here and try to catch some smallmouth, maybe a few largemouth. It's almost bow season. What are you doing? <laughs> it is bow season and I like to hunt too, but uh, all fall long in Michigan, you gotta definitely make a little bit of time uh, to do some fishing. Um, you know, pick the good days for bow hunting, pick the good days for fishing. Um, today we're fishing. Yes, the warm weather of late here into early October has it feeling more like midsummer and not early bow season. So when good friend of the show Ben Nielsen said he was hitting Houghton Lake for some bass fishing, well, Jordan and I said we were in. Now we're just kind of getting the drop shot set up, which is kind of your smallmouth 101, right? So um, just a good looking kind of minnowy, kind of real natural presentation out here. Um, this, you know, the water on Houghton Lake is a little bit of a, it's clear, but it has a little bit of a stain to it. 
So a lot of times those more, you know, browner natural hues, we're trying to imitate gobies and perch and kind of that brownish color does a really good job of kind of overall. Um, so no matter what, you're gonna, you know, be appealing to a small mouth on something like that. Um, but sometimes if it doesn't work real well, we may switch up to more of a, you know, like a whiter or a bait fish type color, just to see if maybe today that works a little bit better. You definitely wanna vary it up. Um, if one thing's not working after a while, feel free to change, right? You know, because sometimes that's all it takes is putting on a different color or a little different bait. Um, this that we're rigging up right now is your classic, well, it's, it's a Ned rig is what it is. Um, and this one's a little bigger than most. This is the larger size Ned rig hook. And I actually usually will throw a little bit bigger bait on it than most Ned rig baits. Um, and this is kind of, you know, that bait fish kind of color just to see for something different. So this one, you know, on the bottom, just kind of slowly dragging it across the bottom, real natural. But this particular bait, it's a four inch uh, Z-Man jerk shad. And the nice part about that is it's made of Elastec, two things. Number one, it lasts a long time on your hook because it's incredibly stretchy and it doesn't break, all right? The other side is that this bait floats, all right? So when that bait goes down and hits the bottom, the buoyancy of this bait kind of picks it up off the bottom uh, and makes it, you know, obviously a little bit more appealing for the fish. So good way to go, no That's doubt about it. That's our start. And this glass calm conditions, middle of the afternoon, not ideal? Uh, Jimmy, no, it's not ideal. <laughs> um, you know, I definitely would much rather have a little chop on the water right now. Uh, the sun is a good thing for smallmouth, but the slick calm uh, yeah. definitely usually will put them in a little bit more of a negative mood. Um, you know, hopefully we can still convince a few of these things to bite, but um, I would much prefer to have a little bit of wind out here right now. Go figure, Houghton Lake, which is known for being so rough, I think we probably have the nicest day of the year going on right now. Houghton Lake special right there. Fell for the old drop shot. So we'll see if I can do this okay here. They're angry fish sometimes. I'll tell you. There we go. Nice. Yeah. Beautiful looking fish. That's a pretty fish. Look at that. Yep. You said it was the drop shot that got him? Drop shot. Yep. Yep. Tried yep. That, there. that bait right there was the one that got him. You can see we got the hook right down in there, right in the roof of his mouth, right where you want it. Ben is an avid angler and fishes a lot of tournaments here in Michigan and around the country as well. He's also very good at explaining the different tactics and setups he likes to use this late summer and early fall time of the year that really can be effective around the state no matter where you're at. That is a spunky one right there. Nice. Another fish on the drop shot. They seem to be kind of liking that today. Not a real big one, but man, he's, he's built well, stocky. You know what, he's got a hook in the bottom, so I'm gonna bring him up this way. Fish, good job. Another nice solid fish there. Let's see if we can finesse that out of there. Yeah, yeah, he's, you know, that's a fat little fish right there. Nice. That was on the drop shot? That was on the drop shot again. Yep. Yep. That one I did not see on my live. I just kind of threw out there and caught. But yeah, pretty looking fish, no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. Good deal. As with most days of fishing, we did throw a lot of stuff at the fish today. From Ned rigs to swim baits, from tubes to spinners, an Alabama rig made a brief appearance. I championed a wacky worm to no avail, but the drop shot seemed to be working the best. And Ben showed us the best way to tie that the proper way. First off, I need my readers, but I'm just putting it through the eye and I'm gonna tie a Palomar knot is the knot I'm gonna tie, okay? But I'm gonna give it a really long lead like this, okay? So I'm coming way out and then I'm coming all the way back in, putting it through that eyelet again and then grabbing it. And then I'm just stretching it out like this, letting that hook slide all the way down to that end. All right, and then the Palomar knot is just real easy. It's an overhand knot, so I'm just taking it like this, just simply doing an overhand knot like this. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this loop end and I'm gonna put it over the hook. So I'm just gonna slide that right over top of that hook 
like so. I'm going to get that right there. You should moisten it a little bit, but I'm not going to do that to everybody. And then I'm going to tighten that down just like that. We'll make a bad knot so Jordan breaks one off. And then what that's created is a long tag end right here that normally you would cut off. But we're not going to cut that off. In this case, we're actually just going to leave that because that's going to be our drop shot line. And you always want to make sure that your hook is pointed upwards. All right. So in this case it is, but what we're going to do to make sure that that stays that way is we're going to take the end of the line and we're going to go through that eyelet one more time. All right. So we're just going to simply come right through if I can do this without, like I said, I need readers. We're going to slide that through one more time. And what that does is that ensures that no matter what happens, that hook is going to stay in that upward angle for us so that it's always up and gets a good hook in the fish. And then you can vary your leader length. You know, in this case, we want to be probably about that far off bottom, what, 12 to 15 inches, something like that. Okay. Um, and then all we do is for this, we're just going to tie an overhand knot in the line. We're going to leave a little tag end on there like this. And then we just make that knot. And then we take our weight, all right, and we're going to slide it right inside of there just past where that knot was and then that knot will hit that and stop it and then it'll hold it right there like that. What I do is I actually will take and tie just a couple overhand knots in it after that just to make sure that it doesn't come off. Especially with these big small mouths sometimes they get to jumping and that weight will really get flinging around but um, that'll just kind of ensure that it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, you wouldn't have to do this last step but um, and that's your basic drop shot rig right there. Well, the drop shot was the ticket today on a rare calm day on Houghton. Jordan was able to land a few fish today as well, and as the day wore down, we had kind of a fun thing happen. Ben was able to hook a fish while we had the drone in the air, making for a fun perspective on a dandy fish. Probably shouldn't swing him. He's probably heavy enough he'd break off. But you coming over here? Yeah, I'll come right down over here and just grab him. Good fish, young man. Yeah, not a bad one. Just slow and steady out here, you know. There we go. Oh, dandy. Yeah, nice one right there. Nice big. Pretty fish. Nice job. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yep. It was a great day on the water. The fishing, honestly, was pretty tough. And it was weird as it was about 80 degrees a couple days before the bow opener. But you just need to go when you can. Like Ben said, when you can climb a tree and bow hunt, get out there and hunt. And when a buddy calls and says he's hitting Houghton for some bass, well, go. Hitting the water with Ben and Jordan, both great bass fishermen, is fun but not because they're good anglers, but because they are both great guys. So get out with some friends and some family. Take advantage of all we have here in Michigan this time of the year. <laughs> you guys not supposed to start out loud laughing. I'm getting really good at setting the hook. It's honestly impressive. <laughs> Oh, come on, baby, be the big fella. It took a long time to finally get the right bite, but I think we just did. Best one of the day? No, it's not that big. It's a large mouth. Here, let me put the... Uh... I mean, don't get me wrong, he's a nice one. Oh, yeah, that's a good fish. Hey, that's where he's been eating. That's just like the drop shot. The way he was going there it was like, uh, let's see if I can box this. Huh? Oh, that's a big fish. That's a nice one. Still bright fish of the day. Could very well be. I think that's probably our last fish of the day. Sun is setting. Oh, yeah. Indeed. Beautiful Houghton Lake largemouth. Every one of them up well here. Done. Just big fat bellies, lots of food to eat. Oh, look, you can look in that fish's mouth. See the tail? 
he's got a perch or a bluegill right down his gullet right now. And so there we go. Yeah. Good fish. Good nice day. fish. You know, I would say another successful day in uh, Michigan's out of doors. <laughs> Good luck to all of you, whether in a tree, on a river, in a boat, or chasing a bird dog. These days are precious. Enjoy them while you can here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Thank you so much for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stick around in upcoming weeks here this fall. We've got a lot of great things still headed your way. We'll do another trip to the Upper Peninsula. We'll do some grouse hunting, a little bit more fishing, and we'll give you an update on the archery season so far this year here in October. If you'd like a little bit more in-depth, behind-the-scenes look at what happens here on the show, you can always check us out online. Well, that's right, Jenny. Online is a great way to kind of keep tabs on us. You can do that through our website. Probably our best way to keep track of us is through our social media outlets as well as YouTube. So lots of places you can be checking us out and make sure you are joining us over the next several weeks. There is so much going on around our great state right now. Get out and enjoy it. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. By SCI. SCI helps protect, promote, and preserve wildlife through conservation practices, which include hunting. SCI supports and funds conservation programs in the state of Michigan. Learn more how you can get involved at a chapter near you. By Jay's Sporting Goods, with locations in Clare and Gaylord. Jay's has been serving the Michigan outdoor enthusiasts since 1971 with a wide variety of outdoor products. The gear, the knowledge, the tradition of Jay's. On the web at jaysportinggoods.com. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man.